Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I've got an interesting topic to talk about, and we're going to jump right into it because it's going to be one of those little brief little mini things I give to you. Hey, 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 Doris, good to see you in chat. Kai, nice to see you. Like I said, it's going to be a little brief introduction to demonic discouragement. I don't want you guys getting discouraged. There's so much out there to get discouraged about you guys. So hang tough. I'm going to run the intro and we're going to jump right into it. <laughs> oh, you guys are so great. Thank you so much for joining us and a happy holiday weekend it is. It's great to see everyone in chat tonight. I hope you guys have some wonderful plans, maybe some barbecue or, you know, some fun with the family or you know what, maybe you're just hanging out with your cats, your dogs or whatever. But I want to thank you for joining me tonight. This is just one of those things I just kind of like thought. I talked about this with uh, an exorcist just the other day, and we were talking about some of the worst ways that the devil just tries to bring us down. So, before, all right, before we uh, get started, I just want to say a little Hail Mary for everybody out there tonight, everybody on the road, everybody visiting family and friends, because you know what? Whenever you get discouraged, whenever you feel down, whenever you feel like you can't deal with it, guess what? Guess who crushed the head of Satan? That's right. Jesus' mama. Don't forget about the power of Mary, okay? And Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Okay. Mary's taken care of. Now... What is discouragement? You know, what do we feel like? What do we think about when we get discouraged? You know, this is really, really hard because sometimes we have a tendency as humans to be very much, we're going to get things done, we're going to do it no matter what. It is just one of those things that we're finishers. You know, we're taught that we have to finish things. We cannot walk away. We cannot leave things alone. We have to keep going forward. So when you're looking at being discouraged, you guys, we're looking at, you know, you're just kind of downhearted. You're feeling awful. You're dejected. You start getting depressed. You know, things aren't going the way you wanted them to. And that's really hard because... We have our, our expectations set up. We have um, ideas about how things are supposed to go. And I'm talking above board, all right? I'm talking about in relationships, with work situations. How do we get discouraged? And what do we do about it? A lot of times, I mean, more than anything else in the Bible, everything's, don't worry. Don't worry. Just, just don't worry. It, it's going to be okay. And people don't understand that discouragement is right up there with worry. Because this is one of the biggest tools. You don't even think about it. You think, well, you know, the devil's doing this. The devil is tempting me with this. The devil is tempting me here. No, it's discouragement, you guys. How do we get discouraged? Well, think about it. We try too hard. We put ridiculous expectations on things. And these immortal beings are watching us at all times. So they're looking at you and they're thinking, okay, it's in the mind, right? She's already worried. He's already worried. Let's put some more suggestions in there and say, you're never going to get this done. It's not going to happen. It's not going to work. There's no way you're ever going to finish any of this. So, your mind is already going. Your mind is already telling you, repeating what something's been said to you that you're stupid, you're not going to finish it, you don't have the time. So, the discouragement is layered into you by the power of suggestion. Your mind is being overwhelmed with things that you can't understand. Why am I having these thoughts? Why am I thinking about this? Why am I thinking... Well, I've got plenty of money, but I can't pay my bills, so I'm getting discouraged about what? The fact that they're never going to stop coming in? The fact that... What? What is it? What is the number one thing right now that you're being discouraged about? Distracted. Dissuaded. Being run off and told that 
you can't deal with it. it the, the battlefield really is in the mind. That's where everything happens. And this is where we have to kick it. So you're already thinking about finances. You're thinking, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to have this. Okay, that's, that's one facet of your mind. Where else does discouragement come? What about your energy? Are you sleeping properly? Most of us don't get seven hours. Raise your hand, kids. Yes, if you don't, we try. Get seven hours, seven and a half. We need sleep. We need our minds. In order to rest, in order to make certain chemicals in our brains, you guys, we've got to get an adequate seven and a half hour sleep, period. Some of us, you know, there's very few of us that can operate on six or four or five hours. Rare, 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 rare. Okay, so your mind is tired. Your body is just going, oh, somebody please just shove me back in the bed. I can't do that. Bills got to get paid. Things have to get done. So your mind's worn out. Your body's worn out. What about your soul? You know, I, I see a lot of people on here and they talk about this whole consciousness stuff and they talk about exercise, moving, and they talk about, you know, focusing your mind on positive music and, you know, positive, positive energy and, uh, you know, positive reading. Let's read some good books. What about prayer? What about a solid spiritual life where you're actually one-on-one -on -one with your creator? So when you're looking at the whole package, you know, this, this triad of horrible things that these demonics do to get you demonically discouraged. And then I'm going to tell you how to get rid of it too. A good point being made in the chat is terminal, not terminal, but perpetual illness, because some illnesses are perpetual. Some illnesses are terminal, but ongoing illnesses such as, you know, there are so many of you out there and I'm, oh God, I'm so, I, 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 it's so, so discouraging. Eye pain, back pain, hip pain. Um, physical pains can be so discouraging. So, like I said, when you look at this triad of things that we depend on as humans, our mind, you know, to be refreshed and renewed and, and have new ideas when, you know, sometimes we're hitting a wall, our body, our body is worn out, our body is exhausted, and our soul. Maybe we're not taking as much time as we could to sit and meditate with the Word of God. Maybe we're not taking out as much time and spending time at adoration or at church or with other people studying things that are uplifting and positive. So if any one of these legs falls short you have an open invitation for things to start pestering you in your weakest spot. And that's what they look for. They look for the chink in the armor. Okay, so your mind is great. Hey, your mind is positive. You're staying on track. But your body, hmm, haven't gotten enough sleep. Don't really exercise. Don't walk a lot. Your soul is pretty well fed. But your body, your back is hurting. Your legs are hurting. Maybe you've got headaches. You know, I have, I, 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 we've got friends, they've got headaches so bad. These headaches are so horrific, they literally cripple people. Put them in bed. And what does the demonic do? You're never getting better. You're not going to get through this. You're not going to get over this. Your mind is constantly supplanted and reminded. People around you. Well, how come you're still sick? How come you can't go find a doctor? People are on you constantly. Why? Because they don't even know, but they're used. Their thoughts are being channeled by demons that are saying, okay, let's go pester that person. Let's go pester that person. And they do it. They ask inane questions. They're like, I'm sorry. I didn't even realize what I said to you. They didn't mean it because they just heard it and they repeated it. That's why our tongue is such a powerful, powerful killer. We have to be really careful. So your discouragement from demonic, how to tell if it's regular discouragement from the demonic discouragement, you have to ask yourself these three things, all right? Number one, 
Is the discouragement a temporary setback in something that you can see there might be a potential way to solve the problem? Is it temporary? If you can answer yes to that, chances are it's not demonic. It's just, it's something that you can power through. You can pray through. You can step back and you can walk away from it and then you can come into it again. Number two. Is this discouragement making you feel physically ill? Are, do you, sometimes people get like a throat tightening where they can't swallow and they can't breathe and it's really hard. Or, you know, when we get under too much stress, oh my gosh, we have like horrible stomach pains. We've got like ulcers, you know. We, we, people get GERD because all this acid and stuff. Ask yourself, if this is in your body and it's affecting you physically, how long has this been going on? Now, the length of time, hi, good to see you guys. The length of time that this is going on is not necessarily easy to tell if it's demonic or not, but if it's so pervasive that you're constantly being sick from it, if there is something that you can physically do to change, such as get more sleep, have a better diet, if there's something that you can do, it may not be demonic. Usually is, but it, you may, it may not be. It may be something that you may have to fight on a different level. Discernment is the best way to figure this out. When you are living in a fight or flight situation, such as a permanent disability, or a very abusive relationship, you're going to have physical symptoms. Your body's going to break down. That's all there is to it. That is a fact of life. Is that demonic? The abusive situation is demonic. The physical symptoms of, let's say, Crohn's disease, things like that, that's not anything that you signed up for, that you asked for. Is it demonic? Probably not. When we have these severe afflictions as Christians, we have to ask God to help us carry these crosses because we can't do it alone. Our attitude, though, can be affected. So we talked about mind, body, now spirit. Another thing that we have to look at when we are attempting to determine if so, uh, this kind of uh, entrapment, that's what I call it, it's just an entrapment, this discouragement, is our soul really grounded with like-minded believers? I think that a lot of us don't even take into consideration how important it is for us to have like-minded friends. Uh, let me answer that question at the end, okay, kids? When we have like-minded friends that are, they're eating good. They want to go walking with us once a week. They are... They're reading great books and they're sharing with you lots of things. When we surround ourselves with people that are positive and loving themselves, taking care of themselves, and contributing to ways that are saying, hey, come on, let me pick you up. Come on, let's do this together. Then our soul, by from who we are in the positive, having a relationship with God, Christ, is going to be reflected in the friends that we choose and the friends that we want to be around. So we cover those areas. Now, when we choose to be around people that hurt us, belittle us, target us, use us, that's not very healthy. And this kind of discouragement is very difficult. Because we think that we're martyrs helping other people. It's not so. We have to take a step back and understand God wouldn't choose this for us at all. So we have a choice. Some things we do not have a choice. Choosing people that use us, mistreat us, we do have a choice and we can walk away. There are situations, and I know of a couple right now, that 
it's very difficult to walk away because of children involved, marriages, long-term relationships are very difficult. So to recognize it is to begin to battle it. To battle it, you have to bind it away immediately and send it to the foot of the cross because you, with your super tiny little grain and deposit of faith, you can send it to the foot of the cross, you can use the name of Jesus, and you can stop it right there in its tracks. Simple binding prayer. I bind, I bind this thought of failure. I bind this thought of failure to the foot of the cross, and I send it to the foot of the cross for Christ's disposal at his will and at his compunction for him to do with what he wants. And by this binding, any emptiness or any voids, I ask the Holy Spirit to come in and fill completely. In Jesus' name, amen. Always use his name and I always say, amen. Seal it up. Done. Say it as often as it takes. So if it takes you five or six times, continue to say it. I guarantee you, you'll get so good at getting rid of this little stuff. You'll have to even say it halfway through once and it'll be gone. There's a question in chat that um, came up about compulsive spending as far as being demonic. And we're talking about discouragement here. What would cause compulsive spending? Oh my gosh, seriously, you guys, that's really awful. When you think about somebody that has to constantly compulsively spend, I was in a relationship with somebody like that, that uh, for whatever reason, the person had closets full of clothing. I mean, that, that credit card was warmed up and that person was ready to go. So when you think about somebody that has to compulsively spend, what are they doing? All right. Are they happy with their lives? Are they enjoying life? Mm, no. So what causes them to compulsively spend, you guys? something that they're hearing. They're not good enough. They don't have enough. Hmm. Well, maybe they just don't look good enough. So, well, they better go spend some more money. And this goes for, you know, gambling. This goes for looking good. This goes for clothing. I've got to cut it off here because this is just like the mini minute. And uh, basically, you all have to remember what? Battle's been won, right? And uh, we here at Art of the Deals are here to help you win the fight and win it right. Don't be discouraged. Use that name of Jesus Christ. Bind it to the foot of the cross. And I guarantee you, you too will not have to worry about discouragement. And if you'd like, if you have any questions, remind me and I'll post that binding prayer down in the bottom. Please click a like. Okay, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you can. And if you'd like to follow a, a lead to Patreon or PayPal and support the show. Thank you guys so much for joining us. God bless you and have a great night. Thanks, Bernard, Kai, Doris, Russell. Yeah, good to see you, Emmy. Hey, Sue. God bless and good night.